Okay, so let's revise one more time. So we created uh, the unit test case where we are actually writing to a file. We are writing from one to 10, we are writing uh, the integer objects to the file. And then finally we are reading it, this file again, into an input stream and passing the same input stream to our random online sampling method. This random online sampling, this takes input stream and it uh, first of all, it reads uh, the first sample size method, uh, sample, sample size of objects from this input stream and add it to our running sample. This running sample is something which uh, we are sampling the data from. And now, since we have seen uh, at least the size of uh, four or these are sample size, after that, we keep on listening on the online streaming. And we are mimicking it by just reading it from a file where we have already stored from one to 10. After the four, number one to four is added, the next object would be read is five, six, seven, eight, nine, like this within this while loop. And every time we create this random integer, random index, you can say, from the number seen so far. For example, it should start with five, six, seven, eight. And whenever this number, uh, the random number, which is generated uh, by this thread local random class, it will give me this ID to replace. Only when this ID to replace is less than sample size, only then we're going to swap it. Or we can also use the same collection.swap uh, doing the same thing uh, where we are going to pass it one by one for again. So I can pass this from zero to four, just, just pass this whole method here and with the ID to replace here. But uh, just, I mean, uh, just that would be too, because random sampling is something where we actually uh, um, change, uh, add the new data only uh, uh, only when it's needed. I mean, most of the time network packet sniffer, it was like this is that it will always have this almost a similar type of uh, random sample uh, and have a very less number of changes. This is, uh, we'll see that when we actually run this code. Okay, and then we actually mimic it by just having a sleep of say 500 milliseconds. And every time we, uh, when this random is generated, sample is generated, we are going to print it. Once this is all done, and once we have read all the all the like the data of 10, then we will have this end of file exception. We'll just uh, uh, consume the exception. I mean, we will not throw anything. We'll just break this loop. After that, we'll close our object input stream and return the running, the final running sample. Now, enough of talk, talking now, let's run this code. Let's click on this run method now, and let's see how it works. It's running now. Say one, two, three, five. So it's keep on changing the standard number. You can see that first of all, it created a red sample of. So when it got five, then it was actually uh, creating a random index of say four. That's why four was replaced with five. Similarly, then in for the next run, when six was like red, the six was uh, the ID to replace was actually I think uh, three. That's why the three was replaced with six and so on. So as, as we keep on getting this random sample, we, the data is getting changed every time. So guys, this was all about the problem two in which we did random sampling on the static data as well as the online streaming data. In the next video, we'll cover the third problem, which is deadlock, in which we will uh, demonstrate the deadlock issue and also see how to resolve the deadlock issue. So stay tuned for the next problem.